what do you think are the best consistencies for cannabis concentrate? I think we all know that for the most part, sometimes they're inconsistent with themselves as far as consistencies goes. But which ones do you prefer? Which ones do you think are the easiest to handle or the best to use? I'm about to show you which ones I think are the best. But before we get started, this idea was pitched on a Twitch stream. So if you don't smoke with me on Twitch, we go live after 9 p.m. Eastern. We're probably getting high right now. All right, let's get right into it. So we are going to focus on consistencies and not extraction methods. There's BHO, PHO, ethanol, CO2, rosin press. There's a ton of different types, but we're going to focus on the actual consistencies. All right, let's start off with the classic here, shatter. Years and years ago, when I was first getting into dabs, if it ain't shatter, it don't matter, is what most people would say. I would typically look for shatter. It had higher THC percentages than most stuff when I cared about big numbers. But over the years and after a lot of wisdom gained, I have learned that shatter is the worst consistency. It's my least favorite. And we're going to ignore the fact that there's a ton of different consistencies of shatter itself, pull and snap, pure glass, sappy shatter. But basically, I just got to start this off by putting shatter in poop tier. If you dab shatter every day of your life, there's a good chance you have like 17 grams of it just stuck to various parts of your room, stuck to the wall, stuck to your monitor, stuck to your glass rig, stuck to your cat as he's walking out the room. It's wild. Shatter's crazy. So I figured if I start off with the worst one, we can also give you the best one to my absolute favorite consistency for concentrate butter live butter cured butter batter sometimes pretty close to the consistency in most cases during the extraction process they whip it up and you get this beautiful creamy consistency it's not always exactly the same but it's my favorite easiest to handle great for cold starts great when you need to do a, a specific size dab very easy to handle all right let's jump into the next one here wax wax is slightly different than crumble in my opinion it's a little bit closer to butter it's maybe in between butter and crumble as far as the consistency or the viscosity goes but crumble is really dry and wax is not quite as dry i would say wax is a tier it's really high on the list some waxes are the same consistency as butter sometimes they just use one term for both but i would say wax is slightly drier than butter but not quite as dry as crumble now crumble is poop tier i think you know shatter and crumble are the worst crumble can be good but for the most part every time i get it there's like 10% of it left in the container. You just can't get every little piece of it off. You can stick a honey straw in there. You can do a lot of shit, but I'd rather just be able to scoop every bit of dab out of my container without losing it and without some of it sticking into the container. A good portion of it usually will crumble. All right, next is oil. It says distillate oil here, usually extracted with CO2, but you can get oil or you can get an oil consistency with a few different types of extractions. It's good for things like making edibles. Usually distillate is higher in THC. Obviously, they fill vape pens with it. It's usually usually easy enough to handle if you want to make moon rocks, but some people prefer a better type of concentrate. I would say distillate, D for distillate, D tier, bro. Not great. You can get it in syringes sometimes. You can get it in containers. It's not the best. Okay, let's talk about bubble hash. We're going to go under the assumption that this is six star full melt bubble hash. It's dabbable because most of these things on the list are dabs, except RSL maybe, but you don't want to dab that. But let's just say we got some beautiful six star bubble. That's the best fucking shit, bro. That's the best. It might not be the easiest to handle in some cases. Sometimes it might. I've had some different six star hash. Some of it's maybe 5.8 star. Leaves a little bit on your nail. But for the most part, if you have really clean ice water hash and it's full melt, that is amazing stuff to dab. Salmonless hash oil. One of the best things you can dab. And typically not too hard to handle. If it's not full melt, it might actually be a little bit harder to handle in a similar scenario. Let's do RSO right after just so we don't get confused on it. You don't want to dab RSO, but it is a cannabis concentrate. I would say it's best for edibles. Taking it directly or putting it in an edible is one of the better ways to do it. And that's a full spectrum extract. It's better than distillate edibles because you're getting a full spectrum high. I'd say RSO, if you're eating it, and this might make an edibles tier list or something in the future, S tier, bro, full spectrum extract. You don't want to dab it. I need to say it two or three times. You don't want to dab it. But if you're using it for its intended purposes, S tier, right? This one kind of slipped the list here, but I have honeycomb. Honeycomb wax is something that I sometimes see. I used to see it a lot more in Colorado, but it's basically like a super vacuum purged crumble. However, I feel like every time I got honeycomb, there was only a few different extractors that I got it through in Colorado. It was always way better than crumble. It wouldn't stick to the inside of the container as much. It was slightly different, slightly better. So it, in some cases, honeycomb is very similar to crumble. 
But I would say most of the honeycomb that I had would be C tier, way better than crumble. And I wouldn't have any issue with some sticking behind in the container, which was kind of why I hate crumble. There's a few others on this list I like. I put diamonds, sauce, and then diamonds and sauce as a combo because in a lot of places you can get them all separately or you can get them together. When I first started seeing diamonds and sauce, they were together. So I would say diamonds, dabbing diamonds by themselves can be easy to handle. You get different size of diamonds, small ones, big ones can be easy to handle. But as far as the overall high goes, they're usually just like THCA crystals. You're not getting a lot of other cannabinoids. You're not getting flavor with it typically. Diamonds by themselves, not great. I would say C tier. One of my favorite parts of dabs is the flavor. I'm going to do a lot of dabs. So if it tastes good every time or it tastes good the several times I'm going to dab, it's more enjoyable than if it just gets me high and doesn't have any flavor. Diamonds typically don't have a lot of flavor. They can, but typically they don't. Sauce by itself. I would say sauce is better than diamonds. It's typically more flavorful. You'll get a larger profile of terpenes and cannabinoids, and it really increases the quality of the diamonds when you put them together. But sauce by itself, I would say is B tier. It's not the best to handle because it's so goopy. It's nice to have that goop of flavor and then that solid chunk of THCA crystal to get you high. But usually sauce has a high percentage of THC anyway. It's just not as high as the diamonds by themselves, maybe. But when you mix them together, when you put the diamonds and the sauce together, the gems and the juice, I've seen a few different names for them. Those are the only ones I can recall. But when you put the diamonds and the live resin sauce together, I was thinking A tier, but I, honestly, bro, S tier. I got my apothecary shirt on. They call their diamonds and sauce ambrosia. That was one of the names I couldn't think of. I got it right on my shirt here. Ambrosia days. A lot of great diamonds and sauce. I've dabbed so much that it's definitely one of my favorites. All right, next on the list is crystalline. This is usually THCA crystalline. It's similar to diamonds, but it's really like fine, small, powdery almost. Sometimes you'll find tiny little crystals. Sometimes they'll be a little bit chunkier. But typically, it's powdery crystalline stuff. This is pretty good, but I don't like crystalline by itself. It's kind of like diamonds for me. Like, sure, it's all right but I'd rather have it with something else. I'd rather add crystalline to sauce or something to mix up the high a little bit. But dabbing crystalline by itself, in most cases, it's annoying and I almost never dab it by itself. I always scoop a little bit of butter and then roll it in some crystals, get a little sauce, something that the crystals are gonna stick to. I'll scoop that first and then try to stick crystals to it, like fun dip or something, you know? So it's good for adding on to your dabs, but crystalline by itself, if that's all you had to dab, you'd hate it. There's a couple of times I loaded up my Puffco chamber and then just like without thinking, I'd pull on the Puffco before heating it up. So I'm just pulling all that loose crystal. It's like powder THC sometimes. Just I pulled it into the device. I looked in my chamber and I was like, oh, fuck. I just sucked all that into the device and I wasted the dab because there was no heat yet. I'm a dumbass. So crystalline by itself, not great. I would say... <sighs> It's worse than diamonds, bro. I got to put it on D tier by itself. You add it with some other stuff, it might make it up higher on the list or as an add-on for dabs higher up on the list. But crystalline by itself, bro, D tier. It's weird looking at this list and seeing this lit higher than anything. Yeah, this lit's poop tier. What am I thinking? This lit's trash. I'd rather have shatter than distillate. I'd rather have crumble than distillate. Yeah, this lit's trash. There's no poop trash tier. Maybe we just put it back. It doesn't even make the list. Nah, we'll keep it a poop tier. All right, next on the list, sugar wax. This might not be the best picture of it. I actually, I could only find terrible pictures and I didn't feel like taking my own because I like this little format where the word was under it. So I just took a bunch of screenshots before the video to get some basic ones out of the way. There's definitely some stuff that's not on this list. There's between different states, they'll have different names for the same consistency. Or some places might just have unique names I've never heard before. So if I missed anything on the list or a type of concentrate, consistency, whatever, just make sure to berate me in the comments like everybody else does. But sugar, sugar wax, I typically get live sugar. I have seen cured sugar waxes, but it's not about the live versus cured in this video. It's just about the consistency. Sugar is one of my favorites. Sugar wax is great. Easy to handle. You can get drier. You can get stickier, saucier ones. But for the most part, in general, I love sugar wax. I would say S tier. There's a lot of S tier stuff on this list. I do like butter more than sugar. I do like... I don't know. It's weird seeing so many things at S tier, but RSO is kind of, you're not dabbing the RSO. Six star hash, you might not even have that much access to it and it's going to cost you a bit more. Here's the thing though, dabs themselves are S tier. Smoking isn't that great. Dabs themselves are S tier. Of course, more things are going to make the S tier list. But yeah, sugar, I would say it's definitely one of my favorites. I get it a lot. And, and I sometimes prefer it over diamonds and sauce. Diamonds and sauce, 
could probably be closer to A tier overall. When I when I take another look at it, diamonds and sauce might be closer to A tier because I do like sugar better. I do like butter better and I do like six star hash better. So that might make a little more sense. Now, the last thing on the list, I know I didn't want to talk about different extraction methods, but if I didn't put rosin on this list, I would have got a thousand comments. Boo, you forgot rosin. You don't dab rosin. Well, just to appease the people that might not understand the assignment here, I've included rosin. Rosin to me, you can have flour rosin, hash rosin, dry sift rosin. You can press it at different temperatures with different pressures. You can do different methods to alter the consistency after the extraction. People People do a lot with rosin but in my experience a lot of rosin has a has a similar consistency depending you're gonna find differences but i do see a lot of rosin with kind of like a buttery battery consistency but a little on the drier side somewhat like wax but maybe a little bit different rosin it's got to be s tier because of the type of extraction that it is but i would say the consistency in general on different presses for rosin may be closer to a tier the consistency in general but rosin is s tier but maybe the you you're going to find a ton of different consistencies of rosin. But yeah, we got to leave it on S tier for the weirdos. So looking at this list, I'd say I pretty much agree with where everything's at. You can maybe switch up some things. I did mention consistencies are inconsistent with themselves. I might be talking about a butter that's way goopier than any butter you've ever seen. So maybe these don't make sense for you. But let me know what you think in the comments. And if you missed my tier list on the best ways to get high or the best methods for getting high, check out the list right here. I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a lit day, my dudes. See you in my next smoke session on Twitch.